Britain, the woman who sobbed at the mere mention of David Jackson's name, was now in jail awaiting trial for killing him. Exactly where Barbara belonged, said Detective Donna Velasquez. She made it happen. She was the instigator, as well as just being the one in the middle. I had no doubt in my mind that she was the catalyst. Barbara, meanwhile, maintained her innocence, claimed there was a certain reason Michael Wolf lied about her that way. It was payback, she said, for something that happened when they were married. And here came another one of those odd stories. Earlier, remember, there was the one suggesting drug running on David's delivery truck. Now, a story about Michael and gun running. I was putting away laundry one day, and I saw a bulge in a dress shirt pocket, yeah. and there was quite a bit of money there. And when he got home from work that night, I confronted him on it, and he told me that he was doing gun runs to uh, Haiti. Barbara said she told the police about Wolf's alleged gun running. And he got mad, and he even told the cellmate of his that that's it. You know, make you pay the price. That I was, yeah. Interesting, true. Wolf hasn't commented. But Keith Seltzer, Barbara's defense attorney, suspected Wolf had a much more practical motive. Michael Wolf was initially offered a 15 year plea bargain to take 15 years and testify against whoever his accomplices might be. Sure. And lo and behold, a week after the jury convicts him of first degree murder, well, there was an option at that point to maybe get that 15 years back. That was his motivation. In other words, said Barbara's attorney, Wolf would sell out Barbara any way he could to get a reduced sentence. Of course, there was the uncomfortable fact of the two unprompted confessions he'd made to his ex-wives, confessions in which he portrayed Barbara as a sort of black widow intent on having David killed. Well, there are two versions that he gave to each of those ex-wives. The stories were not entirely consistent, said Attorney Seltzer. Besides, he said, Barbara was at home in Arizona the night of the murder. How does he know that? A phone bill from her mother's home placing calls to her home in Arizona that night where nobody else could have been there. And what's a phone bill of that age doing lying around somewhere where it can be grabbed for evidence by the defendant? The father was a meticulous record keeper. What's to say that wasn't an answering service that picked it up? Michael Wolf testified in his first deposition that they had no answering machine. Could have been somebody else in the house. We questioned Mr. Wolf about that, and he said that there was nobody there. But as the defense prepared for trial in December of 2010, something changed. There was new evidence discovered. Lainey Bandell is the prosecutor who inherited the case. And that new evidence was what we consider a jailhouse snitch. And he came forward and stated that Michael Wolf told him he had fabricated the entire story about Barbara participating in the murder of David Jackson. That particular jailhouse snitch was well known, the DA said, mostly for the false information he provided. Still, after three years in jail, it was enough to get Barbara released and placed on house arrest pending trial. And then? Prosecutor Bandell met Michael Wolf to ask him about testifying against Barbara. Didn't go well. The blow came to me when he said, what am I getting in return? What will my sentence be reduced to? Now the state reassessed its options. I think with any case, you're taking a 50-50 chance. The lack of forensics, the lack of physical evidence that a jury wants to see, but most importantly, again, the fact that you have a co-defendant who is giving the testimony, which was the foundation of this prosecution, who wanted something in return. The people who conducted the investigation, you know, deep down in their guts, are sure that she was at the center of it. Did you think so too? What I think as a person and what I think as a prosecutor, um, I have to keep them separate. And while I may have believed that Barbara was a full participant in this, mm -hmm. what I can prove is totally different. So you made an offer? We made an offer. Barbara Britton was offered two more years of house arrest and eight years of probation. She would avoid trial, but she had to plead guilty to accessory after the fact in David's murder, meaning she acknowledged knowing about the crime, but only after it occurred, something she'd always denied. You gotta remember, I had that option to go to trial and take it. It's just, 
taking your chance with 12 to 14 other jurors who would hear a story sure. about a Mata Hari right. control freak who very cleverly manipulated men to get them to do this awful thing. Right. They already know what you're there for. So they're already going to have somewhat of an opinion. Even though she accepted the deal, Barbara was not happy. True, there was no prison time, but she was a felon now. You have a title over your head. It's life-changing. It's very life-changing. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. Put your hand Detective down. Velasquez joined David's family at Barbara's sentencing to, uh, hearing. You're okay with the stipulation yes, and the judge. fact that it's a guilty plea? Yes, Judge. Okay. And Judge, for the record, David Jackson's mother would like to speak. Judy? Of course. David's mother read a victim's <clears throat> impact statement. Because of you, Barbara, I have cried endlessly for 24 years. I wanted to die myself to be with David. Her gaze fixed on the woman her son once loved. You are guilty. Michael Wolf is where he should be in prison. Your father is where he should be. And you would join him one day because that is where you should be. In hell. David's brother, Mark, was not at all sure that justice was served. If you lose in trial, that's God's will. You can't control that. Mm. But I think it should have gone to trial. I think society in two years when she comes off a of house arrest, needs to worry. Wait, wait, I want to have a picture of David. But his mother? There is justice, yes. And she's a felon now for life. She's got to live with all that. I don't. Oh, my God. Every time I get out of bed in the morning, one leg says guilty and the other one says felon. And as for the detective who so doggedly pursued the case, who now thinks a murderer got away, at first I was disappointed, so I had to make peace with it. And when I put my head down on the pillow at night, at the end of the day, she's a felon. Mentally, when you're in prison here, do you ever escape that? As for Barbara, Barbara is spending her house arrest in her father's home. That old VW, the one in which they allegedly carried off David's body the night he was killed, is still parked outside her days surrounded by the curse of her father's alleged sin, and many still feel cursed by the part she played in murder. So the allegations that you took part would suggest that the two of you were living together and equally aware of your mutual guilt. <laughs> that's what it would suggest, but that's not how it is. Bit of a curse, huh? Seems like it. You're surrounded by it, even though... Yeah, I'm surrounded by it. My dad, he's passed on and moved on, and and I'm living it every minute.